Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, thank you for checking it out. Hope you enjoy this video reaction. It's my reaction to a pitch meeting. This is for the second uh, Caribbean, Pirates of the Caribbean movie. So let's hop into it. Let's all have a good laugh, I hope. I will, I hope you guys will as well. Here we go. So you have a pirate sequel for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. So what's going on with the characters? Okay, so Elizabeth and Will are about to get married, right? Okay, okay. So marriage is still a thing then. Interesting. It yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't marriage still be a thing? Well, it's just that in the last movie, they all found out that there was treasure cursed by heathen Aztec gods, so... Yeah? Well, I just figured that everybody finding out that Aztec gods are real might have some impact on their religious beliefs. But you're saying marriage is still totally a thing. <laughs> Yeah, marriage is still a thing. Okay, great! Great. So anyway, their wedding is actually stopped by this guy, Lord Beckett, and he has warrants to arrest them because they helped Jack escape in the last movie. Oh, right, 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 right. So he wants Will to go find Jack because Jack has this compass that points to whatever the holder wants the most. Okay, so the whole movie's about finding a compass? Well, see, actually, the compass is going to point to a key which opens a chest which contains a heart which belongs to Davy Jones, who controls the seven seas. Oh, okay, that sounds like enough nautical theme MacGuffins to fill up a pirate movie. <laughs> yeah, I figured that would be enough checkpoints, so Will takes off, because Beckett says he'll set Elizabeth free if Will does this. He's got to find Jack in the entire sea? Yeah, and he's going to pretty quickly. <laughs> oh, he is? Yeah, because in these movies, the Caribbean Sea is the size of a little fishing pond. <laughs> oh, it is. That's great. So anyway, Jack is on the Black Pearl, and he's going to be like, why is the rum always gone? That's like what he said in the last movie, kind of. <laughs> it sure is, sir. People really like that line, so we're bringing it back, kind of. Oh, bringing a line back because people seem to really like it as tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So anyway, Jack gets visited by Will's father, Bootstrap Bill, who's a part of Davy Jones's crew on the Flying Dutchman ship. Okay. And Bootstrap is like, hey, you made a deal with Davy Jones years ago, so now you gotta join the crew or be taken by the Kraken monster. Both terrible options for sure. Yeah, and then Bootstrap leaves Jack with the black mark, which the Kraken is attracted to, and he vanishes back to the Flying Dutchman. Oh, this guy can teleport. I bet that's gonna come into play later. <laughs> Nope. Oh, okay. And so then we're gonna see that the Kraken can take down a ship in like two seconds flat. Very scary. Yeah, unless there are main characters on the ship, in which case it takes five to ten minutes. Nice for the Kraken to slow down for important people. It sure is, sir. So anyway, eventually Will finds the Black Pearl on this island and discovers that Jack and his crew have been captured by a tribe of cannibals. Well, how'd they get out of the cannons? No, not cannonballs. These are people that eat people. Oh, okay, gross. Yeah, and they think Jack is actually their chief. Why? Unclear. But the thing is, they actually plan on eating their chief. They have this whole ceremony plan. Oh no. Yeah, and so Will and the rest of the crew get put in these bone cages suspended from cliffs. Why would the cannibals hang their food over a cliff? Because it's gonna make for a fun escape scene in this movie we're making and no other reason. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, and so they all escape through the power of physics not being a thing and the whole thing is gonna take up a solid 20, 30 minutes of runtime with really fun action stuff. Does it move the story forward at all? Not really, no, but it's gonna take up a solid 20, 30 minutes of runtime with really fun action stuff. Well, great. Anyway, so meanwhile, Elizabeth has escaped and she's trying to catch up with everybody because she's in the movie too. Right. And so she sneaks onto the ship and tries to get this crew to bring her to the island of Tortuga. How does she manage that? Well, she leaves a dress lying around so everybody will think there's a ghost on the ship. That's her plan, tricking people into thinking she's a ghost. <laughs> That's what we're going with. And then she does some expert level puppeteering work and it's completely dependent on nobody looking slightly upward. <laughs> they her standing there. I mean, there's no way that plays out perfectly. And that plays out perfectly. Oh, okay. And so then Jack and Will are gonna encounter Davy Jones and his crew, and this guy just teleports over. Oh, this guy can teleport. I bet that's gonna come into play later. Nope. All right. And his whole crew is super spooky, because there's like this curse or whatever, and they're slowly becoming sea life and merging with the Flying Dutchman. What are you talking about? Well, they all have like sea stuff on them. Like one of them has a shark on his head. Davy Jones just full on has an octopus as a face. So how does that work? Did an octopus just settle on his face one day and just kind of stay there? and merge with them? I don't know. Fair enough. So then Jack kind of backstabs Will and leaves them on the Flying Dutchman, but he gets to reconnect with his father, so that's kind of nice. Oh, he reconnects with his long-lost, partially a fish father. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, but then Will challenges Davy Jones to a game of Liar's Dice. Oh, he does? Yeah, and he says if he loses, he'll join the crew, but if he wins, Davy Jones has to give him the key to the chest, which he keeps on him. Oh, very high stakes. Yeah, and so Will's father jumps in the game, too, and loses to save Will. Oh. And Will is like, Dad, that whole 
whole thing was just so I could see where Davy Jones keeps the key, you dummy. What if Davy Jones didn't keep the key on him? Then Will wouldn't have found anything out. Yeah, it was a massive risk to take, but it works out perfectly, as these things often do, because I write them that way. <laughs> well, I guess it'll be hard to get the key off of him now, though. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he just walks into Davy Jones's room that night while he's sleeping and slips the key off of him. No problem. A strange man came onto his ship and specifically asked about the key that could lead to his death, and he didn't take any precautions to protect it when he went to bed. That's right. Well, fantastic. So anyway, eventually, Will finds himself hiding on the front of the Flying Dutchman, which is a ship that goes underwater. Seems like that might affect him in some way. Well, it doesn't. Okay, jeez. And so eventually, Jack and Elizabeth and that jerk Norrington from the last movie, they all find the chest, and then Will shows up, too. How did Will get there? Oh, I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back about how Will gets places, sir. Okay, let me get off of that thing, you scary person. And so a three-way sword fight breaks out for the chest, because Norrington wants to use it to get his life back as a douchey officer, and Jack wants it to call off the Kraken, and Will wants it to release his father from the Dutchman. Seems like a couple of those goals might overlap. Maybe. So then Davy Jones and his crew show up, and Norrington manages to get away with the heart. Oh, no. And so when the others get on a ship, there's going to be this big Kraken attack, and Elizabeth is going to kiss Jack and handcuff him to the Black Pearl. Why? Well, because the Kraken is after him specifically, so this is the only way the others can get away. Oh, that makes sense. So then Jack gets swallowed up by a Kraken, and Davy Jones gets super angry about his missing heart, and everybody else goes to see this lady, Tia Dalma, who reveals she brought Barbosa back from the dead. Whoa, wait, whoa, what's happening with all, all of that? Ah, uh, stay tuned. What? Oh yeah, we're just gonna cut it off right there so people will want to come see the next movie. Just not resolving anything at all? Yeah, so people will want to come see the next movie. That's actually very smart. Oh, and then we're gonna have a post credit scene where we find out that that dog is now the chief of the tribe. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Wait, they're gonna eat that dog. Yeah. Oh my god. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. I do think we should get somebody wacky to come in and help with the designs of Davy Jones's crew. Those people need to be weird looking. I mean, Johnny Depp's in the movie. I mean, yeah. So? So, you know, pretty obvious who we could get to help out. <laughs> oh god. That is funny. Oh god, that's so damn funny. So, yeah. Oh god, that was funny though. I, I, God, I swear this guy has the one that creates this. He is a genius, in my opinion, to to find out find these funny things about the movie that go under my radar. I mean, like he's referring to about the dog. Yeah, the dog's now the king of the tribe which means that he's gonna get eaten <laughs> never thought of that and I never thought about how it is that uh will seems to always be getting from place to place you know that is the funniest this thing well i hope you guys enjoy this and had a good laugh like i have and uh there will be more like uh coming up in the future you guys take care of yourself and the ones you love bye bye